Assalamualaikum and good evening. Today I'm going to teach you all regarding the lymphatic drainage of the head and also the neck. So just for the introduction part, uh, you have to know what is the lymph. Limb is a, a it's kind of like a fluid, it's like a, the blood. And then we also have a channel that carry the lymph, hmm? like a blood, we have the blood vessel, but here for the lymph, it has the lymphatic channel. So the lymph is removed from the tissue. Definitely the lymph is present, uh, uh, it drained from the tissue. Okay. And then this lymph from the tissue will be uh, drained by the lymphatic channel. That we, uh, this uh, lymph will go into a regional lymph node. Okay. So that is regarding the lymph. And the efferent channel will, uh, will then drain to the more proximal lymph node. So the proximal lymph node actually is located near to the part of the that it drain. Okay. And the yeah, efferent, the efferent will drain into the major vein in the root of the neck. Okay. And so this is the, the final destination of the lymph where finally it will be drained into the major vein in the root of the neck. Okay, the final destination for the lymphatic drainage. Okay. And then uh However, virtually all knots have collateral channel. So this is a very important point for lymphatic channel where it has a, a collateral channel. It's like a bypassing channel. Okay, that sometimes they bypass the regional lymph node. That's why uh, we have a distant metastasis without the involvement of the primary knots. Okay, that is the reason sometimes uh, uh, the the knot is not involved, the primary knot is not involved, but then we have a distant metastasis because of this presence of, of the collateral channel. Okay, for the uh, lymph, uh, lymph tissue of the head and also the neck, the head and the neck is drained by the two groups of the lymphoid tissue. And this lymphoid tissue is known as a adenoid tissue and also the lymph gland. Okay, so uh, for the adenoid tissue, it is located surround the entrance of the pharynx. So uh, we have the opening of the pharynx, right? In the uh, uh, oropharynx. So it's surround uh, uh, the entrance of the pharynx. And this uh, adenine tissue is known as a well uh, lymphatic ring with the, the big uh, W, with the big uh, capital letter of W and the apostrophe S because this is the person that giving the name of the uh, lymphatic ring, okay? And then it form a ring yeah, because later we're going to uh, further discuss on this part. Okay, no need to worry. But uh, this part will be further discussed during the GIT block later. Okay. And then uh, the lymph gland are arranged in a for the lymph gland, it, uh, and they are arranged in a uh, in the two form of chain, which is the circular chain in the in the circle form, and the vertical chain. Okay, it's a very vertically oriented. So we have the identity tissue and also the lymph gland. Okay, this picture just to show you the lymphatic of the head and also the neck. So you can see the, the blue color one is actually uh, represent the lymph node that present on the face and also in the neck. Okay, for the I'm going to discuss uh, uh, the well lymphatic ring first. Okay, for the well lymphatic ring, it has a uh, it is located at a several portion or several location that you have to know. Okay, on the, for the superior part, so we have the pharyngeal tonsil. So if you see here, this is the pharyngeal tonsil or adenoid tonsil, the same name, and the same uh, type of uh, lymph node, okay, that located at the superior part. So it has the two names, okay, and then the location is definitely in the root roof of the pharynx, okay. And then inferior <coughs> part here, we have the lingual tonsil, and this lingual tonsil definitely it is related with the tongue. So the, na uh, uh, the name of this tonsil is based on where it is actually is located. Okay, so here it is uh, associated with the tongue, hmm? located at the base of the tongue. And laterally we have the palatine tonsil. So palatine tonsil we have uh, on the right side and also on the left side. Okay, palatine tonsil. So if you uh, try, uh, combine, join together all of this uh, tonsil, so you can see it is actually in the ring shape, in the ring form. So that's why this uh, lymph node is actually in the form of the ring, lymphatic ring, okay? Where there is lymphatic ring. And then the lymphatic drainage, okay? Lymphatic drainage for this 
where there is significant ring, it will be drained into a jugular digastric node. Where is the location of the jugular digastric node? Here. Okay. Actually, the jugular digastric node is a superior deep cervical node. Okay. It is a deep group of cervical node. Okay. And it becomes a main limb gland. A lymphatic drainage for the tonsil. All of the tonsil that I mentioned just now. Where is the location of this uh, uh, jugular digastric node? It is located below. If you see here, located below the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. So we have the anterior belly, we have the posterior belly here of the digastric muscle. So it is located below here. Okay. At the angle of the lower jaw, definitely we have the lower jaw here. Okay? At the junction of the common facials and the internal jugular vein. And then we have the internal jugular vein here. Very, uh, very easy to identify where is the location of the uh, this jugular digastric node. Okay, this is the, the, the picture just to show you all the, uh, the, the, the tonsil that form the various ring. We have the pharyngeal tonsil, we have the palatine tonsil, and also the lingual tonsil. Okay, this picture just to show you the same thing. We have the pharyngeal tonsil, we have the palatine tonsil, we have the lingual tonsil. And then this is the histological section of the pharyngeal tonsil. Okay. Okay, so for the limb node of the head and also the neck, limb node in the head and the neck, okay mainly in the face and also the scalp it consists of the number of the regional limb node a group of limb node that name according to the region so the name of the the limb node that present in the head and neck is actually based on where is the location of the limb node okay for example we have the preauricular submental submandibular okay later we can discuss further in the neck limb node consists of the superficial okay superficial is in the circular form Okay, that drain. Uh, this superficial group will drain into the deep cervical group. Okay, that is the most important point that you have to remember. Superficial drain into the deep cervical node, and then for the deep cervical node is in the in the vertical orientation. Okay, the superficial node usually it is uh, subcutaneously located. Okay, lying along the external jugular vein and superficial to the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Okay. So this is the location of the superficial, superficial limb node. Hmm? Okay, this is the, the original limb node uh, that we have to know. We have the <coughs> occipital, occipital limb node. We have the uh, pre, uh, retro auricular limb node or posterior auricular limb node, and then we have the pre auricular limb node. We have the parotid limb node, we have the facial limb node, we have the submandibular. So if you see here, we, this is the submandibular, this is the submental limb node, and then we have the superficial cervical that located along the external jugular vein. And we also have the anterior cervical that located along the anterior jugular vein. And uh, we have the retropharyngeal node, laryngeal and tracheal. We're going to discuss uh, later one by one, no need to worry. We start to discuss on the submental node first. So if you see here, this is the submental node. Okay, it's very small there. Okay. Hmm. So uh, the submental submental node, uh, some of the uh, some superficial other than deep to the investing uh, deep cervical fascia. So the submental limb node. Okay, the submental limb node. It drains a wedge of tissue. In the floor of mouth and the lower incisor of the gum, uh, lower incisor, the gum, and also the lip tip of the tongue. So this is the part uh, of the structure that drained by the uh, submental limb node. Okay. Hmm. Uh, definitely, it uh, drained the floor of the mouth, lah. Okay. And as the structure uh, that present in the floor of the mouth is drained into the submental limb node. Lower incisor, teeth. Okay. The gum. Okay, and the lips, huh? and also the tip of the tongue. Okay, it's very simple. It's very easy to remember. And this uh, submental limb node, okay, submental limb node will drain into the submandibular uh, group of limb node. So if you see here, this is the submandibular group of limb node. Okay. Uh, sometimes it also uh, drain directly into the deep cervical limb node. Okay. So if you see here. This is the deep cervical limb node. Sometimes it drains directly into the deep cervical limb node. Okay, for the submandibular limb node, <coughs> okay, if you see here, this is the submandibular limb node. 
half a dozen uh, lie on the surface of the submandibular salivary gland. Okay, so if you see here, this is the submandibular gland. Okay, uh, so it lie uh, on the surface of the submandibular uh, salivary gland. Okay, or sometimes also it is embedded within the gland itself. And this submandibular lymph node, it will drain the submental node that I have shown you in the first picture. And it also drains in the lateral part of the lower lips. Okay, you have to remember all of this structure that drained by the submandibular lymph node. And also the upper lips and the external nose, anterior to third of the tongue. So this is the, the structure that drains into the submandibular lymph node. And then the anterior half of the nasal wall, paranasal sinuses, and all teeth uh, except the lower anterior. So mean that this structure, anterior half of the nasal wall, paranasal sinuses, and all teeth is drained into subindividual lymph node except the lower anterior. Okay. How about the pre-auricular? So this is the pre-auricular hmm, that located anterior to the auricle of the ear. Okay. So the pre uh, pre auricular lymph node, okay, uh, it lies within the within the parotid gland, okay, it lies within the parotid gland. It drains the temporal part, okay, it drains the temporal part, lateral surface of the auricle, anterior wall of the external meatus, and lateral part of the eyelid. So this is the structure that drains by the uh, pre auricular lymph node. And then well, we have the buccal lymph node. So if you see here, buccal node, it lies over the vasculitic muscle on the facial bed. Okay. And then uh, what are the structure that drain by this lymph node? Hmm? Eh, sorry, this, uh, this lymph node, the buccal lymph node, will drain into the submandibular lymph node, group of lymph node. Okay. So this is the buccal lymph node. So this lymph node, the buccal lymph node, will drain into the submandibular group of lymph node. Okay, we have the pre-auricular and then we have the poster, uh, uh, posterior auricular lymph node. Okay, posterior auricular lymph node. Uh, poster, uh, posterior auricular, auricular lymph node, uh, it is situated on the lateral of the mastoid process. So if you see here, we have the mastoid process here. It is located on the lateral of the mastoid process. Uh, okay, here. Uh, it receives the limb from the scalp, okay, on the, uh, from the scalp here. Uh, above the uh, definitely the scalp is above located above the auricle and posterior border of the auditory meatus. Okay, this is the part that uh, drain into the, uh, the, 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 uh, the part that drain by the posterior auricular lymph node. And then we have the occipital group of lymph node here, it is situated at the apex of the posterior triangle of the neck and it receives okay, the, the, the limb from the back of the scalp. Okay, I hope you can remember. All the structure that drain by the each of the lymph node that I have mentioned just now, and then we also have the superficial cervical node, okay, that lie along the course of the external jugular vein. Okay, unfortunately, we, I we, I don't have a picture here. Okay, and then uh, this superficial cervical node it receives lymph from the skin over the angle of the mandible and over the apex of the parotid gland and also the lobe of the ear, okay? And for the anterior cervical node, if you see here, we have the anterior cervical node here. It is situated along the course of the anterior jugular vein, okay? It receives limb from the skin and superficial, uh, superficial tissue of the front of the neck. Okay, for the retropharyngeal node, Okay, for the retropharyngeal node, it lies in the retropharyngeal space. I think I have teach you regarding the retropharyngeal space, right, in, uh, in my previous lecture. Okay, so the retropharyngeal node is located in the retropharyngeal space, yeah? which is located between the pharyngeal wall and also the prevertebral fascia. I hope you still remember, okay, this, uh, the fascia layer, the deep cervical fascia, the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia, okay. So we have a space there, right? Still remember. I hope you still remember that one. Okay, so the retropharyngeal node, uh, it receives limb from the nasal part of the pharynx, auditory tube, and upper cervical vertebra. And then uh, we also have the laryngeal node uh, that is located in front of the larynx. 
And then we also have the tracheal knot located on the lateral and in front of the trachea. If you see here, we have the free tracheal limb knot, we have the paratracheal limb, uh, we have the parat uh, paratracheal limb knot, we have the free tracheal limb knot. Okay. Okay. So it receives uh, limb from the thyroid gland. So if you see here, this is the uh, thyroid gland. Okay. Now we're going to discuss on the deep cervical limb knot. Okay. Just now, whatever I have mentioned just now is a superficial group, a group of limb knot. Okay, it's a, in the in a, in the circle form. Okay, but here, the uh, deep cervical limb knot is in it is it is a vertically oriented. Okay. Okay. Uh, The deep cervical limb knot, uh, this gland, gland it forms the vertical chain that extends from the base of the skull to the root of the neck. Okay, to the, from the base of the skull to the root of the neck, and it's scattered in the carotid, uh, scattered in the carotid sheet, in front and behind the internal jugular vein along it, its course. Okay, so this is the location of this knot. They lie, uh, this limb knot, it lie along the side of the fairing, the trachea and also the esophagus. Okay? And uh, it lie uh, under cover of the, uh, of the stenocladomostoid muscle. So mean that it is located beneath the uh, stenocladomostoid muscle. Okay? This deep cervical limb knot, it is divided into the upper groups and lower groups. And this is the most important thing that you have to remember. It is divided into a uh, upper groups and also the lower group. And this uh, deep cervical limb knot is connected by the lymphatic channel. So there are two of knots that clinically known as a jugular digastric and jugular omohyoid yeah, that you need to know. So if you see here, okay, we have the upper deep cervical limb knot, we have the lower cervical, uh, deep cervical limb knot here. Okay, if you see here, this is the jugular digastric. And this is the jugular homohyoid. Okay, no need to worry. We're going to discuss one by one. Okay, uh, for the upper group, hmm, it receives limb from the posterior part of the tongue, okay, from the tonsil, from the ear, from the nose, from, uh, from the sinuses, and upper part of the pharynx, and also the nerve. The jugular digastric knot, uh, the jugular digastric knot, if you see here, this is the jugular digastric knot that I have mentioned earlier in my, my previous lecture. It lies below the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. This is the digastric muscle. And usually uh, this knot is clinically palpable. You can feel the knot below the angle of the mandible. So this upper, upper groups, it drain the bank of the tongue and also the tonsil. For the lower groups, okay, this is the jugular omohoid knot, okay, the lower group. So the jugular omohyoid limb knot, it receives a limb from the anterior part of the face, the anterior two-third of the tongue, lower part of the pharynx and larynx, and also the thyroid gland. Okay. The jugular omohyoid knot, okay, related to the intermediate tendon of the omohyoid muscle. So if you see here, this is the omohyoid muscle. Okay. Yes, it is related uh, to the intermediate tendon of the omohyoid muscle. And it is concerned with the drainage of the limb from the Entry part of the tongue. Okay, so this is the lymphatic drainage of the tongue. Just to show you, it's very complicated here. Okay, how the tongue, how the limb not drain the, the tongue. Okay, and then uh, here now we're going to proceed with the jugular lymph trunk. For the jugular lymph trunk, okay, the deep cervical knot, okay, it uh, will receive limb from the regional limb knot of the head and also the neck. Okay, the thing that you have to remember, the deep cervical limb knot will receive the limb from the region, uh, from the regional limb knot, regional limb knot that actually in the circle form, and that I have mentioned just now, the superficial uh, group of limb knot, and the efferent limb vessel. Uh, Will join to form the jugular lymph trunk. Okay, jugular lymph trunk is more larger in size, lah. 
Okay, so the efferent lymph vessel will be joined together to form this uh, more larger vessel, hmm? the jugular lymph trunk. Okay, this vessel will drain into the thoracic duct or into the right lymph duct. Okay, if you see from this picture, this is the thoracic duct. Okay. So, uh, sorry for the, the small picture. So, we have the lymphatic duct here, the right lymphatic duct. Okay. Okay. And this is the uh, thoracic duct. Okay. So, this is the right lymph duct. And then uh, the right lymph duct and the thoracic duct will drain into the subclavian vein. So you can see that the, the final destination of this uh, lymph it will be drained into the uh, subclavian vein. So if you see here, we have the uh, subclavian vein. We have the left subclavian vein here. We have the right subclavian vein. So here, the final pathway definitely the lymph will be drained into the uh, into the vein. Okay, the subclavian vein. Okay, uh, so this is uh, the picture just to show you how the, 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 the part of the body is that, that is be, being drained by these two big channels, which is the lymphatic, right lymphatic duct and also the uh, thoracic duct. Okay, the, this is the area of the body that drained by the thoracic duct. Okay, so you can see the half of the, uh, on the left half of the body, okay, face and also the neck. And also the thoracic region and majority and the all part of the lower the uh, lower part of the uh, 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 the lower part of the body. Uh, they include the uh, right and left lower limb. And then this is the area that drained by the right lymphatic duct. Okay. So you can see this is the right lymphatic duct. It will drain into the subclavian vein. Okay, this is the thoracic duct. Okay, thoracic duct here. You can see there, the thoracic duct. Okay. Uh, the, uh, from this, uh, uh, the way that the cause of the thoracic duct, you can see that's why uh, majority of the part of the body here it is drained by the thoracic duct. Okay, but here it just drained on the on the right side part of the body. Okay, and also the head and also the neck. Okay, but here it will, this thoracic duct will go down here. Okay, and then it also drain the lower limb. Both of the lower limb. Okay, there are some of the applied anatomy that you need to know. Okay, the lymph node are soft and non, uh, it's not palpable structure. That is the most important thing that you have to remember. Uh, lymph node it uh, act as a barrier against disease. So that is the main function of the lymph node. So it will form a barrier. Okay, whenever there is an infection or the microorganism that try to invade the body, so it try to filter. Okay, the the lymph node will group into a groups. The lymph node will group in, uh, uh, walk, uh, will walk into a groups. We have the primary lymph node, we have the secondary lymph node, and the tertiary lymph node. And this all the lymph node will try to combat. Okay, try to protect the body from the disease huh? and prevent it from the reaching the major lymphatic channel. It's like a filtering system of the body. We try to filter the microorganism, the bacteria, and also the viruses. Okay, and then we have one condition uh, that associated with the uh, inflammation that involve the uh, the lymph node or involve the lymphatic channel. So if you see here, we have the lymph uh, lymphangitis, okay, inflammation of the lymphatic channel, and then we have the lymph adenitis, okay, due to the uh, inflammation that involve the lymph node, huh? due to the bacterial infection. There is a red streak from the wound or, uh, or area the, uh, or the, of the cellulitis uh, due to the inflammation of the connective tissue. And this uh, cellulitis okay, will lead to the rigid node, uh, will go into the rigid node uh, as a fluid where it filter and foreign substance will be phagocytos. So if we have a local infection, for example, here we have the cellulitis. So this infection will going to the, I mean, the bacteria will, uh, will be drained by the regional lymph node, okay? As a fluid huh, that is filter, okay? The filter will be, uh, the filtering uh, process will be happen at the regional lymph node. And the foreign substance, for example, if we have the bacteria here, will be phycocytos. And the nodes, the lymph node will be become swollen, and it will uh, hard whenever you palpate it, 
and sometimes we, uh, uh, you can feel a pen. Uh, it is a painful. Okay. And definitely it's a palpable. You can feel. Uh, usually the normal lymph node, you can arc at it. The position of a swollen lymph node, um, tender node, uh, it actually indicate there is a infection that presents. Uh, local infection. Okay. And then the draining areas involved in the carcinomatous changes cause the node to become involved, becoming enlarged and stony heart. Okay. Uh, this is the how you differentiate between the lymph node that due to the uh, cancer and also the lymph node due to the infection. So usually for the carcinoma, uh, uh, the lymph node, uh, the enlargement of lymph node due to the carcinoma or due to the cancer, usually it is a stony, stony heart. It's very hard. Okay. And the special feature about this lymph node is uh, uh, it is not painful. Okay. Compared to the lymph node that due to the infection, usually it's painful, but here it is not painful. Okay. For example, in Hodgkin, uh, Hodgkin disease and metastasis of the malignant disease of cervical lymph node, usually it is painlessly in life, so mean that you cannot feel whenever you try to touch on the this lymph node. Uh, and this lymph node also can be enlarged in lymphoma and other lymphatic diseases. The knowledge of lymphatic drainage in the head and also the neck will assist in determining the site of the disease. Okay, so whenever you know the where is the location of the regional lymph node that I mentioned earlier, so you know where is the the real position or location of the uh, the origin of the site of the disease. Okay, the cervical metastasis in malignant disease will require a recall block that's a resection of surgery to prevent the recurrence. So if you have a cervical metastasis, so you have to do a block resection. Okay, in order to prevent the recurrence of the malignancy. Uh, in order to ensure this connective tissue, muscle, gland, and vein, and even the nerve has to be removed. Okay. Uh, and then the anatomy of the nerve and vessel and the node are important for the surgeon. You have to know. Okay. Whenever if you want to become a surgeon later, you have to know where is the exact location of the node. Each of the node that I mentioned earlier. Okay. Thank you.